Most of us will live for a billion heartbeats. Within that span of time, we will have reached old age. Today, however, aging and death are becoming less inevitable. We are moving closer to the dream of immortality. Laboratory mice appear young and healthy. They are, by human equivalent, over 100 years old. Experiments indicate that our lifespans might also be greatly extended. We have sought forever to understand the mystery of why we grow old. Now, that goal is coming within our grasp. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Like distance runners on a measured course, all of us will move through time in a roughly predictable pattern. In the first stage of our lives, we develop and grow, reaching toward an ultimate peak of physical vitality. As we mature, however, the body begins an irreversible process of gradually wearing out. A new awareness of physical fitness may help prolong our years of health and vigor. Yet nothing we do will work to halt the inevitable force of aging. Most of the changes of aging take place deep inside the body. The lungs become less able to take in vital oxygen. Powerful muscles gradually lose their strength. The heart loses power and pumps less blood. Bones grow ever more brittle. Valves and arteries begin to harden. Blood no longer circulates as well. As our lives continue, the symptoms of deterioration grow worse. The body becomes more and more vulnerable. Finally, we encounter a stress. A stress that is greater than our physical resistance. Often, it is only a minor accident or chance infection. But this time, it brings life to an end. Each of us must at some time confront the grim reality of growing old. With every passing year, the visible signs of wear and decline become more and more apparent. Try as we might to hide the fact, our wrinkling, sagging, and loss of strength tell us undeniably that we are aging. Since our earliest history, we have been obsessed with the idea of prolonging life and recapturing lost youth. We have endlessly searched for ways to vanquish the physical toll of passing time and a means to unlock the working secrets of the clock of aging that ticks inside us.
alchemists sought for centuries to brew an elixir of life that would reverse the effects of age. In 1919, a rejuvenation treatment was introduced by a Russian-born surgeon named Serge Voronov. Using the sex organs of chimpanzees, Voronov grafted their tissue into the bodies of aging men. Voronov claimed amazing results, and his therapy made him a millionaire. Yet the popular treatment met a sudden end when numerous patients became accidentally infected with syphilis from the chimps. Nevertheless, Voronoff's work was a pioneering step in medicine. Today, near the warm waters of the Bahamas, a youth spa offers perhaps more modern techniques of rejuvenation. Dr. Elliot Goldwag is the spa's executive director. It is a place that he describes as being devoted to the study and application of revitalization therapies. Here, the often wealthy or famous clientele receive an array of treatments which the center's staff believes can reverse many effects of aging. To open pores and renew the skin, faces are bathed in a warm mist of steam. This is a general relaxation training procedure. Rest your arms beside you. Clients who have problems eyes. sleeping are taught techniques to induce relaxation. I feel the tightness going out of my chest. The skin is carefully checked for flaws and signs of unusual wear. Regular cosmetic facials remove debris and other dead tissue from the skin. A facial mask is said to improve color and texture and to restore youthfulness. High pressure sprays are used to stimulate the body, reportedly alerting and invigorating millions of tired cells. Inhaling atomized seawater mixed with aromatic oils is prescribed to aid respiration. Regular massages are provided to relax and tone tight muscles and to stimulate circulation. Warm seawater baths are said to allow natural minerals to absorb into the skin. A day of revitalization is often ended with a live chicken embryo cocktail. The egg is believed to act as a biological catalyst to stimulate healthy cell growth and revitalize tissue. Cell therapy is another treatment offered at the center. Cells from unborn lambs supposedly revitalize aging tissue when injected into the body. Dr. Ivan Popov is the medical director of the Revitalization Center. You have two kinds of troubles which we call premature aging. Some of them are irreversible. If you have intoxicated yourself and ruined your liver, 
very often it's practically impossible to correct it. But you have many reversible phenomena. And those reversible phenomena, by stimulating our own body to react, to fight against the aging, we can't make anybody one day younger than they are. But we, make them, we can make them function and look younger. Because the majority of the people does function and does look older than they should. And this is one of our aims, to put them in the right age. The magic elixir of life has not yet been found, but compelling new discoveries may be bringing us closer. In 1932, a classic experiment nearly doubled the lifespan of rats simply by cutting back drastically the calories in their diet. The reason for the effect was then unknown. Today, at the University of California at Berkeley, Dr. Paul Siegel has also greatly extended the normal lifetime of rats. The result was achieved through a special protein-restricted diet, which had a profound effect on the chemistry of the brain. Siegel showed that within the brain, specific chemicals control many of the signals that influence aging. By altering that chemical balance, the clock of aging can be reset. Since the mechanism of aging may not be very much different in rats than in humans, it implies that we're no, no longer stuck with the idea that we have to get old. It means that we can now devise treatments that can alter the rate of aging, not only in rats, but eventually in humans. For the first time, the mystery of why we age is being seriously challenged. Scientists in many fields are now making dramatic and far-reaching discoveries. An average lifetime lasts 75 years, yet in each of us lies a potential for near immortality. If we could retain the vitality and resistance to disease that we have at age 20, we would live for 800 years. At UCLA, Dr. Roy Walford has linked aging to the body's complex immunity system. Dr. Walford believes that aging may not be a slow wearing out of the body, but rather an active self-destruct process. When a germ or foreign tissue has entered the body, a special blood cell of the immunity system quickly moves in to destroy it. Dr. Walford believes that with time, the immunity system loses its ability to tell the difference between the body's own cells and foreign invaders that should be destroyed. As the immune system becomes less able to distinguish self from non-self, the body slowly ages. Experiments with mice have supported Dr. Walford's ingenious theory. When injected with drugs to suppress their immune systems, their lifespans were greatly increased. Special experimental diets designed to affect the immunity system have also been shown to have dramatic effects on aging. Two mice are the same age. A lifetime on a normal diet leaves one tumored and ready to die. The other, whose diet has been carefully controlled, still appears young and healthy. A new experiment in Dr. Walford's research involves a technique called parabiosis. A young and an old mouse are surgically attached to share a common bloodstream. Perhaps the younger mouse's immune system will extend the lifespan of the older mouse.
Dr. Leonard Hayflick, an eminent biologist working in aging research, has made a revolutionary discovery about the reasons we grow old. It was long thought that individual human cells could continue living indefinitely. Yet Dr. Hayflick found that our cells have a maximum lifespan. They can divide only about 50 times before they wear out and die. If indeed the clock of aging lies deep inside each cell, there may be an ultimate limit on how long we can ever hope to live. I think the goal of extending our useful lives for longer periods of time within the normal uh, lifespan is certainly a possibility and a, and a probability. But I think that increasing the absolute lifespan for man is very improbable. Nevertheless, Dr. Hayflick continues his search deeper into the mysteries of the living cell, probing for the secrets of why the body grows old. It's pointless to have as our goals in gerontological research increasing the length of time we spend on this planet simply for the sake of increasing the time. I think what is important to consider and what's essential to consider is how that time is spent. If we're to spend it with an additional 10 years of infirmities of old age, I don't think that's desirable. If we're to spend it with additional 10 years of vigor and activity, both physical and mental, then that is the kind of goal we should strive for. To understand the mechanisms of aging to the extent that people will live a full and productive life until the stroke of midnight on their 100th birthday, at which time we would all drop dead. Today, even the finality of death does not necessarily mean an end to life. A technique called cryonics may offer a hope of immortality. A California cryonics facility is operated by Art Quaithe. Cryonics is the science of low temperature preservation of human life. Cryonics suspension is the freezing procedure by which we preserve patients after they've been pronounced dead in the hope that at some future date, medical science will be able to cure whatever they died of, repair the damage caused by the freezing procedure itself, and restore them to life. Now, in this capsule, we have two human patients, a 65-year-old man and a 75-year-old woman, both of whom died on the same day three and a half years ago. Their families arranged to have them placed into cryonic suspension. They're being maintained at the temperature of liquid nitrogen, which is minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, there's going to be virtually no change or deterioration or decay for literally eons. These patients are not immortal now, and if, uh, they won't be if and until uh, we can restore them to life. Uh, I, I think that, that if, if indeed that does prove possible in the future, it'll, it'll be at a time when it'll be very likely that almost all the afflictions of man will be treatable and uh, people living at that time will have the expectation of living indefinitely into the future. Under careful laboratory controls, a hamster is painlessly put to death. The animal is packed in ice, maintaining its body temperature at freezing level. It is completely lifeless. Its heart is motionless. Clinically dead for over four hours, the hamster's frozen body will now be allowed to gradually thaw. Dr. Paul Siegel will carefully monitor its temperature and other vital signs. So far, there is no indication of life. The hamster is still dead. Dr. Siegel now uses a simple desk lamp to help warm the hamster. There is still no sign of life. Suddenly, a faint heartbeat registers on the EKG. The hamster may be coming back. 
Artificial respiration aids the animal with its first attempts at breathing. Its temperature is now rising, its heart beating stronger. Take her first few attempts at breathing. You can see her abdomen every once in a while, but every 10, 15 seconds, she'll take in a deep breath. She still needs some help, though. There we go. That's her. See? See it? See the reflexes? Okay, remove the nose comb. As the hamster returns to life, Dr. Siegel carefully watches its breathing and muscular reflexes. Though the hamster's body temperature is still very low, it will quickly return to normal. Soon, the hamster is almost completely recovered. For this particular animal, its amazing experimental voyage through death and back has already been taken five times. Today, for some laboratory animals, the boundaries between life and death are becoming less distinct. It may not be long before we ourselves can venture safely through death and return to catch at least a glimpse of immortality. Though aging and death may be what nature planned for us, science is at last unraveling some of the mysteries of growing old. The process is no longer beyond our understanding and is quickly becoming controllable. We may be on the way to realizing one of our fondest dreams, to live forever and never grow old. <laughs>